Hey guys, AJ with Relentless Racing. Welcome back to the channel. The 1ZZ rebuild is progressing very well. In episode two, we measured and adjusted the piston ring gaps and installed the main bearings, crankshaft, and the bearing cap subassembly. Episode three continues the 1ZZ rebuild with the remainder of the bottom end, which includes the rod bearings, piston rings, wrist pins, pistons, and rods. Lastly, we install the piston rod assemblies into the block. Enjoy the video and please share your questions and thoughts with everyone in the comments. I have everything laid out and I wanted to point out a couple of things. One, I'm gonna be using the exact same bearings that came out of my 1ZZ. So in cylinder one, it's a one, two it is a number one, and then in cylinder three is a number two, and cylinder number four is a number two. And the reason why I'm doing that is because the bearings came out pretty clean. So I got two ones right here and two twos, and then we're ready to roll. Now, one of the other things I wanted to point out was I left one of these guys in its factory position. So it has all the rings on it, it has everything on here. The only thing was I took out bearings and I took out the screws. But one thing to notice about this guy is, notice this dot right here on the piston. There's a dot right there, and there's an extra protrusion right here in the rod. If you look on the other side, it's not there. So this protrusion that's on the rod and this dot need to face towards the front of the motor. And then the other thing that you can notice is this oiling hole that's on the rod has to be on the exhaust side. And you can tell it's on the exhaust side because Remember what I told you guys, the reliefs, the bigger reliefs, if there are four reliefs on here, usually there are four on here, but on this Toyota, there's only two. The larger reliefs are the intake side. So intake side, no hole on the rod. Exhaust side, there is an oil hole on the rod. So let's get started by identifying these guys. And I'm gonna put some little marks on here so that way I know which way to put the piston rings on. Mark the pistons to make positioning the piston rings easier. Reference the Toyota repair manual for the correct piston ring orientation. Toyota did a great job packaging these rod bearings. Notice the bearings are shrink wrapped to prevent scratching. Acetone wipe the rod bearings with a lint free cloth. This is the number four because I marked it with four dots. This is the oil hole so this should be the exhaust side. So let's put the bearings in this guy. So number four is a number two. This one is a number two. Line up the groove. You can see the little hole right there, my finger popping back behind it. Lines right up with that guy. Oop, we just saw it, there it is. And then look at how flush that is. That's what it should look like. Install the other half of the rod bearing into the rod cap following the same method used on the rod. Recall, I kept one of the piston rod assemblies together to use as a reference. First, I remove the wrist pin lock with a custom awl. Then, I use an impact socket and dead blow hammer to remove the original wrist pin. Note, it doesn't take much force to remove the wrist pan. Now, repeat the rod bearing installation process for the remaining rods. Use needle nose pliers to install one wrist pin lock. Verify the wrist pin lock is installed properly. Lubricate the wrist pins. Lubricate the pistons. Lubricate the small ends of the rods. Verify the marking on the rod and piston are on the same side prior to the wrist pin installation. Install the other wrist pin lock. Install by hand the oil ring expander, lower oil ring side rail, and finally the upper oil ring side rail.
Using piston ring expander pliers, install the compression rings with the markings facing up. So this is piston assembly number one. Obviously the connecting rod is attached. We have all our rings on here. I'm gonna try using this stuff and just see how it goes. I'm gonna try and lubricate all my rings. Just kinda put it in the rings just like this. I'm gonna put it in this and all the, I'm trying to get it in all the ring lands is where I'm trying to get it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna shove the stuff in the ring lands. And I'm just gonna get these guys to move around in here. Move in and out, get that completely lubricated. Once I get all these guys lubricated, then I'm gonna adjust exactly where the gaps are pointed. Obviously I wrote on the top right here so you can kind of see that. But let's lube all these guys up. Okay, so we have these guys right here. You can see that this is the upper, the lower, number one and number two. So you can see number one right here. Number one's really easy to see. We can kind of put number one right there. And then number two is, let's see. Oh, here's number two right here. Slide number two all the way over to here. There's number two. The position of number two looks correct. It's two. Let me make sure I didn't move one too much. And there's number one right there. Now we gotta get these lower and upper sections, let's see where they are. The lower is over here. I see the upper. The upper is right here. You can kind of see it split. So I'm just gonna take my pick and I'm gonna push this guy around. I'm gonna have to hang on to the other sides of it and push it around. Let's see if I can get it to go around. There she goes. She's moving. The upper's got to go all the way around there. A little bit more. Okay, I got the upper into the position. I did pass the lower. Here's the lower right here. Here's the lower split. See if I can get it to move around without moving anything. The lower needs to come to this L section right here, so we're close. Okay, now you can kind of see it and put it up close. Look, there's the split in the L right there. There's the L, I guess I can move it over just a little bit more, no big deal. There's the L, there's the one. The upper is right here. Move that over just a little bit. There's the upper right there. Can you see the split? Oh, there's a U. And number two, it's right here. Move it over just a hair. There's the opening in two. Awesome, that one's finished. Just repeat that and we're all set. Install the crankshaft pulley bolt. Lubricate the rod cap bearings. Avoid getting oil on the interface between the rod and rod cap. Lubricate the rod bolt threads and under each head. Clean and lubricate the ring compressor. Lubricate the rod bearings and avoid getting oil on the interface between the rod and rod cap. Acetone wipe the rod journals and lubricate each rod journal with acrolein childs. I am trying Lubriplate number 105 for the first time to lubricate the cylinder bores. Acetone wipe any excess Lubriplate. Here's a quick overview of how I installed the piston rod assembly in cylinder 1. Here's piston 4. Notice the dot is poising towards the front. Let's give it a push here. Oh, there it goes. There she goes. If you notice, piston 4, I pushed it down a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm feeling 
the connecting rod below it and make sure it doesn't hit the crank. So I'm just gonna push this thing down a little bit. Okay, I could feel the rod now. I'm just trying to figure out where the bearing is. Okay. There, I actually got that one all the way down. And I, like I said, I'm feeling for the rod and I'm positioning the rod around the crank. Now I'm gonna grab both my fingers in here and I'm gonna pull the rod up as much as I can. Same thing goes for this one, stick my fingers in there. This one's harder to do because there's less room in here. So kind of grab the, grab the rod and pull up with it and that's about as tight as it's gonna go. Now we're gonna clean up the interfaces of the rods and then we're gonna put the caps on. Acetone wiped the cylinder one and four rod and rod cap interfaces using a lint-free cloth and acetone soaked cotton swabs. Install the rod caps for cylinders one and four by aligning the dowel pins. Start the rod caps by hand and torque them to 15 foot pounds. Rotate the crankshaft so cylinders two and three are at their lowest position. Let's repeat the process for number two. Whoops, number two. <laughs> Almost made a mistake there. Number two. Good, make sure it's nice and round. Good push. Now we push these guys down, feel for it. Put my hand around the crank, and I can feel the rod. There she is. A little bit deeper. Slip. Okay. Go ahead for the rod again. Follow the same cleaning process for the rod and rod cap interfaces for cylinders two and three. Install the rod caps for cylinders two and three. Torque the rod cap bolts to 15 foot pounds. Mark the front of the cylinder two and three rod cap bolts. Retighten the cylinder two and three rod cap bolts 90 degrees. Repeat the process to retighten cylinders one and four rod cap bolts. That rotating assembly is moving very smoothly and that's a really good sign. Subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss episode four. In episode four, we'll be installing the freshly rebuilt cylinder head. This is AJ with Relentless Racing. Stay relentless and I'll see you on the track.